Hello everyone, this is Natalie from NellyDesign.com. Today we're going to be making paper flowers and they're going to be fall flowers that I call chrysanthemum. Okay, so now you know that I can't pronounce that word, so I will only be calling them mums. Um, I made a template for you, so you're going to be able to upload the SVG file to Cricut Design Space and that's what we're going to do right now. So first of all, of course, you go in Cricut Design Space and click Upload. You'll need to save all the uh, files that you found in Nelly Designs library onto your computer. And when you're going to go to browse right here, you're going to find them where you saved them before. As a reminder, the password of the library is at the bottom of every email I sent you. So here it is, the SVG file. I'm going to click open and you have it right here. So save it. Then I'm going to select it and click Insert Images. First thing to do with all of my SVG files, as I always say, you're just going to click Ungroup so that you are left with only the groups of each flower. Now you'll be wondering why there's a little cross inside of each layer of flower. I'll be showing you when we're going to assemble it. For the leaves, let's, let me just scroll down a little bit. So you see the leaf, they have those little lines inside. Well, I made these to use, if you have a Cricut Maker, you can use the debossing tool. It does a pretty good result, I'm telling you. So what you're going to need to do is select each of these layers holding the Shift key and add deboss. If you don't have the Cricut Maker, just turn off the little eye and it won't matter. Just don't use it. So, the only thing you need to do with the flowers right now is to attach everything. Each of the layers are grouped with everything you need to attach together. So, we're going to come here and click Attach. I'm going to select this one and click Attach, and so on and so on. Now, there's one thing I want to show you. These two layers are written Attach. So, I'm going to close them. And I just want to show you that when you select a group and you click Attach, it will go on top of everything that was already there. So that's why it's kind of confusing a little bit. So sometimes I just like this, close the, the first group I did. And now I know that I have to continue and just click attach. So it goes on top right here, attach. So each time I, I scroll down to the last one that is closed and attach. And so on. And that's it, there are no more left. Now you're gonna notice that there are two shades of orange. The reason for that is that if you look at a flower, you'll find that the center of the flower is usually darker than the outside. So if possible, and if you have the materials, I suggest that you make these little petals a shade a little darker than the other petals. You'll see it's gonna look very nice that way. Then you might be wondering why they are not placed equally meaning that this one is a little bit on the side and this one you see it's pretty straight this one is on the other side well this is my little trick for you if you hit make it you'll see that there are two on that side and two on that side so if i go like that i can move them a little bit and use less space on the mat meaning that i'm gonna save some cardstock and you know I like to save <laughs> so if you want to make more than one flower you can click here on two or three or four or whatever and click apply and arrange everything on the mat or you can just leave it as is no problem with that either but I made this so that you could move them in a way that will kind of just work together you see so this is for the flowers I'm gonna hit cancel I just want to go back to the leaves because what I didn't tell you about the leaf is that you'll see in my project that I made six leaves these two ones are the mirrored of these two but I like to make a little bit things a little bit different so I did copy two of them so I hit duplicate and then I scaled them a little bit. 
so I will have some leaves that are not exactly the same size. So I think it looks better that way. So we are ready to hit make it. So we're going to hit make it. And I'm going to continue. Connect to my Cricut. Select my material that will be cardstock. And I'm ready to make it. Okay, so the first thing to do is to take a piece of jute twine and make a knot at one end. This will act as the center of the flower. So you're going to take paint that is the color of the flower, but a little bit darker. You're going to paint the knot of the jute twine that you made. So this is going to dry while we make the flower. Okay, so what you see here are two flowers. I was able to cut both of them on one 12 by 12 because my paper has two sides. There's one side darker and the other one is lighter. So on the, le on the right side, you have the lighter petals that are the big ones. And on the left side, you have the darker petals that are the smallest one. So I suggest that you put them on top of each other from the largest to the smallest one on top so you don't get confused. So I'm taking my Cricut Easy Press mat because I didn't have the mat that go with the blossom tool. I must say I was so surprised how well that worked. So what you need to do is to take the blossom tool that is the same size as the petal. I'm using a tweezer to hold the petal down and you're just gonna press on the petal from the extremity to the center and you'll see it will curve so beautifully. I must say I was really impressed with, this, with these tools. At first I was trying to curve the pedal with the handle of a paintbrush and it was working but not that much. And when I tried these tool I was so impressed. Look at this, it was so easy and they are just perfectly curved. Now check with the larger petals, it's so awesome. And of course you choose the ball of the blossom tool to be the same size as the petal, so it goes very well that way. Even with the easy press mat, it works very fine. If you don't have an easy press mat, I've seen people taking sponges with a uh, fabric on top of it, and it seemed to work very well too. Time to assemble the petals. In order to insert the jute twine into the petals, this is where the little X at the center of each petal comes in. So I'm using a little embroidery needle and I'm gonna go through the petal with the embroidery needle and gently pull so that the jute twine, the knot that we made and that we painted, will become the center of the flower. So holding it very delicately and trying to insert it without opening the petals too much. And then you continue petals by petals and adding glue between each of the petals. The trick is that you try to overlap all the petals so that it looks more beautiful that way. Overlapping the petal is going to be more important when you get to the larger petals.
As for the leaves, I use the finely bossing tip, the number 21, to make to make it look like there are really some veins on the leaves. And using again my new tools, I followed these veins from the outer side to the inside to make the leaves uh, come a bit to life, to make the leaf curve a bit. And after that, I use the handle of the tool to just bend the leaves so that they look more natural. So now it's time to make the wreath. I wanted to put my wreath outside, so having paper flowers was a little problem. So I decided to test and spray them with a Minwax polyurethane and see how long they last. So I'll keep you posted on that on my blog. The wreath I have is a grapevine wreath and I have made a lot of versions of fall and spring wreath with that base and I must say I really love it and it's still in really good shape. So this one was the spring wreath that I made with the crocus flowers and I'll have all the links on my blog if you want to see more of the wreath I made. So I've bought a couple of things to go with the wreath at Michael's and Dollar Store. Honestly, I don't even think it cost me $5, so it was not very much, just to add a little color and texture. And it's really up to you. I mean, there's no recipe for that. It's just creative process that I like to do. The thing you will notice is that I never glue anything to my wreath, and that's why I've been able to use it so many times. I only twist and turn uh, the flowers so that they are really attached inside of the branches of the grapevine wreath. And the thing I want to show you though is how to really um, fix the flower, how to attach the flowers to the wreath and why I did it with a jute twine. So what you need to do using the tweezers is to pass the jute twine around some branches of the wreath and just make knots. Honestly, that's the only thing I did. The jute twine is also used to make the center of the flower, but you could have used some uh, flower wire. It would have also worked, but you would have need to maybe cut a little piece of jute twine to make the center of the flower. I did use wire for the leaves and I added some hot glue, but it would have been better with floral tape. But I did what I had on hand and it still worked and I'm really happy with the result. I really love my wreath and I just hope you make some mom's flower too. And please come and show me on Facebook what you did. I hope you liked this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up and I hope to see you soon. Bye!